everybody. Welcome to my talk. My name is Peter McKee. I'm on the developer relations team here at Docker. And today I'm going to be talking about how to build and test your Docker images in the cloud. So let's take a look at the agenda. So we'll start things off by talking about continuous integration. What exactly is continuous integration? And then we'll take a look at Docker Hub and the way it does CI. We'll start out by integrating GitHub into Hub. And then we'll take a look at setting up simple auto builds and auto tests. And then we'll go a little deeper into that and we'll do more advanced custom builds and custom tests running. And then after that, we'll finish up by taking a look how Docker Hub can fire off webhooks once your images are pushed into a repo. And that way you can integrate with third party uh, products. So what exactly is continuous integration? So continuous integration is where developers merge their changes into a common code repository whenever a feature is completed or a change is made. Once these changes are merged, the CI system can then run automated builds and tests to verify the changes. This is often done multiple times throughout the day. So the way this kind of works is the developers working local on their machine, they create a feature branch to either uh, add a feature or fix a defect. And then once they're done and run their lo test local, then they push up to a remote branch, uh, usually cut a PR, and then once that PR is signed off on, that gets merged into a master branch. And then uh, Docker Hub is listening to that to the merges into master branch, and a webhook is fired and sent to um, Hub. Hub listens to that webhook, and then it will then check out that branch. It will find your Docker file. It will run your build, build your image, once that is passed, then it'll run your tests if you have them set up. Once all your tests have passed, then it'll push your image into the repo. So that's, that flow is what we're going to be looking at today. Okay, so we're going to spend a lot of time in Hub. If you don't have a, a Hub account, please go uh, sign up. It's free. Um, so the first thing we're going to be looking at is how to set up GitHub. So let's go into Hub. So I come over here in the browser and I go to hub.docker.com. Then I'm going to click sign in. If you don't have an account, you can go ahead and create one. Your Docker ID is uh, an account and it's free. So let me sign in. I have my Docker ID and my password. Once I'm signed in, you can go up to this menu in the top right, drop this down, and then go to account settings. Over here in a linked accounts, we have two source code repositories that we can connect to, GitHub and Bitbucket. We're going to connect into GitHub, so I'm going to click the connect. It's requesting that I sign in, so enter my username and password, sign in. I'll probably get a 2FA here, yep. And so 285.620, 285.620. All right, now I can turn off my messages. Okay. So now we're back here in Hub, and I just connected uh, GitHub in there, but now we want to create a repository. So go to Repositories, and we can see I have pmckee, and these are the repositories I have in my current uh, organization underneath my personal name. So I'm going to create a repository. I go ahead and I'm going to call it Hello World, and I'm not going to add, put a description in there. I'm going to leave it public. And then uh, we can either connect here or we can do it later, but let's connect now. So I'm going to click that button. I'm going to drop down the organization. My GitHub is in Ronin JS. So I'm going to select the Docker Hello World. Okay, so let's go ahead and create that. Okay, so now I have a repository, image repository set up in Hub. And if we take a look, I don't have any images yet. I haven't pushed any images. So we're in the general. So let's go ahead and do that now. Let's push an image. So let's go back to, let's first take a look at the application real quick. So my little Docker Hello World is a very simple Node.js application. Uh, here's the source. I have a server. It's going to be listening on port 8080. I have a couple, actually I have one route in here. It's just listening to the root and it will return back. Uh, hello, DockerCon. Underneath the util directory, I have a little helper function here that'll add two numbers together and return the sum. And then I have a little test that will test that. Okay, so let's go down here. Let's take a look at our Docker file real quick. So I have a very basic Docker file here. Um, I'm just using Node as a base image. I set up my working directory. 
I configure an environment variable named port and set it to 80. I copy the package JSON into the image. I run npm install. I take the source code, copy that in the code, and then I tell it the command I want it, the Docker to run is node and pass in uh, server.js. So let's go ahead and build our image. So I'm going to call it docker build. I'm going to give it a tag. Now the tag I need to give it is the same repo that I just set up, hello world. And I'm going to give it the, the current directory that we're in. And so if you see here, we named my repo is pmckee hello world. All right. So pmckee hello world. I hit enter. And there we go. The image is built. So if I do a Docker images, we can see that it's built. So now what we want to do is let's push this image up into Hub. So I'm going to do a lock Docker login. Okay. Docker push. And I'm just going to go pmckee hello world. And there we go. It's going to push it up into Hub. Hopefully my internet is be nice and uh, fast today. And wait for it. Pushed and done. Okay, there we go. So if we come back in here in the hub, let me refresh. So we can see right down here we have latest, just pushed a few seconds ago. And then if we go into tags, we can see that latest has been pushed. Okay, that's great. So let's take a look at our builds so now. Click on builds, and then we'll come over here to the configure automated builds click on that and then we're going to come down here to the bottom so you can see well actually at the top here you can see the source repository is run in js docker dash hello dash world build location we're going to use docker's infrastructure we're going to keep auto tests off for now i'll talk about this in a minute but these aren't very important for right now and then we're going to keep uh repository links turned off and then what we need to set up is a build rule so we'll come over here and we'll set we'll click on the build rule and you see we have a couple options here so we can listen to this either uh, a branch or a tag so we're going to listen to the branch we're going to listen to the master branch and then after our image is built we're going to tag it as latest and then we're going to then we tell the uh the hub build system where to find the docker file to build so the build context is where um docker will use to uh what context it will build in so we give it the root because that's the root and the name of our docker file is docker file and we'll keep on auto builds and build caching so there we go and now let's go ahead and save that now let's go over to our source code and let's make a change so we'll come over here into our route and let's change this from DockerCon to hello world so i'm gonna save that come into my terminal and um, we can see we have a change there by the yellow so I'm gonna commit that change so changes and then I'm gonna go ahead and push this up to the repo now before you would have to do if you made some changes you might run your docker image local another docker build and then push that image up so now this happens right in our workflow so we're gonna push push our changes up to uh, the repository and then we're gonna watch our build kickoff so let's go ahead and push that up there. Okay, let's go back into Hub. And let's go back into our builds. And now we can see that we have a build running right here. Our build is finished. So we can see recent builds, build and master. It was successful. Down here at the bottom, you have build logs, you have Docker file, and your readme. Let's go ahead and take a look at the um, at the logs, we can come down here and we can see the latest SHA has been pushed. So, awesome. Happened about 15 minutes ago. Let's see. Let's go back. So what I wanna do now. So we, we made a change to our code and then we didn't build our image locally. All we had to do was do a get push and we pushed our changes up and uh, Docker picked that up and built our image for us. So cool. So let's add in tests now. So the way you add in to tests into uh, into your CI pipeline and hub is you create this Docker compose .test .yml for YAML. All right. Now in this file, you have to have services and you have to have SUT. So system under test is what it stands for. And then in here, you can do anything you like to do a custom build. 
So all we're doing is setting the context and then telling it what Docker file to use. I'm using this Docker file dash test, which is here, which is a little bit richer Docker file than we were using before. Uh, I just wanted to be able to show the difference that you can use different Docker files, but it's basically the same. Uh, we set up the node environment variables and I set that to test. So this is a build argument. So you can pass in build arguments to do builds with Docker. So we set up a build argument. We, we default it to test. Then we set up the node environment. Pretty much the same. We also allow this to be able to override um, the port argument with another build argument. And then we copy in our package JSON a lock, npm stall, same thing. And um, so then let's go back to our test YAML here. And then when you can see, you can give it a command. So we run, we say npm run tests, right? So if you're not familiar with uh, Node and npm in our package JSON, you can set up scripts. So we have a script in here that's Jest. Jest is our test runner, and so Jest will Jest will run and um, we'll run our tests. Okay, so let's make another change. Let's go. Let's change this back to DockerCon. So let me save that, and I'll come over here. And now, real quick, so over in Hub, we don't need to do anything on our builds. The only only thing you need to do to set up auto uh, auto tests is to create that test YAML file. You just need to create this docker compose.testyaml. Okay. So I'm going to do a commit. So get commit. And I'm going to say changes. Okay, cool. So let's push this up. Okay, we push that and then we'll come back here in the builds. Let me refresh real quick. And we should see we have another build kicking off. So our build was successful. So let's take a look at the logs here. Let me move this up a little bit more. Okay, let's go down through the logs. And we can see here that our image was built. This is our test image. You can see the underscore sut. And then right down here, you can see Jess was run and our tests ran. And they all passed. And so since they passed, you can see here that our image was pushed. Pretty cool. All right. So, so we set up um, some simple builds and uh we pushed to push to our get repo and we ran our builds and then we set up uh custom tests so we created a docker uh compose dash test file and so right in here so we set up our uh, test file we told it what docker file to use what command we wanted to run to run our tests so th that's basically how you set up some basic uh tests it'll run your docker file and it also um It'll also then run whatever command you want to give it to run tests. So what I want to look now is building some kind of tie into the CI process. So this is where the real power of hub comes in. So there's some life cycle methods that happen when uh, your images are being built and your tests are being run. And we can hook into those and we call those hooks. So if you create a hooks folder in your repo, and then if you add these files into it, these files are get um, run during the life cycles and you can override the build command you can override um, the pre build and the post build and then you can also ride override the pre test the post test and then you can also override um, pre push and post push and so what we're going to look at is we're going to set up a custom build and um, so let me uh, let me pull up that file. So let me copy this file over here real quick. And so this is our custom build file. Let me select all this and copy this in. So basically, your your hooks are just bash files, shell scripts. And you you have access to all these custom environment variables that Docker will pass and will set up in the environment and run your bash script. So we have access to this Docker tag. Um, you can pass in um, also you can uh, and then you have a docker file and an image name but you can also set environment variables in hub custom environment variables so let's go take a look at that real quick so let's go back look at builds and let's configure a custom environment variable so I'm going to scroll down here um, oh I'm sorry you got to configure builds 
So now I'll come down. So I'm going to click on a custom environment variable. And I'm going to set the port. And I want that port to be 8080. So if you remember in our Docker file, we set up an environment variable and we called it port 80. Right? So we can add an arg here. We can call it port. And we can set this to default it to 80. And then down here in port, we want to set this to port. Okay, so let's save that and I'll show you if you remember in our uh, test, you'll see the same thing here. Okay, so the argument port equals 80, environment variable port, and it sets it to the build argument. Okay, so that's what we did here. So save that over here in our custom build. Now we can take a look at Dogger says, uh, so this I'm triggering this build and here's the docker tag that was triggering this build so if it's equal to latest then we're going to echo out say building image for port and whatever port is in that environment variable then we're going to do a docker build we're going to give it a custom docker build command and we're going to tell it pass in this build argument of port and set it to whatever is set in hub and then send in the uh, docker file path and the image name the docker file path and image name come from these rules right here okay so let's save that and then let's come over here and I'm gonna commit those changes I'm gonna go get uh, commit changes and I'm gonna push those so that gets pushed up in the git docker hub is watching that waiting for the webhook and if we come back into our builds we'll see that we have a build kicked off Okay, our build is finished and you could see that it was successful. So let's roll down here into the build logs a little bit. And I'm gonna, oh, I'm sorry, I'm gonna start at the top. So you can see here, um, this is just a pre-build hook, pre-build tests. Okay, now we're executing our build hook and the build image is gonna use port 8080, right? So that's where our custom build is being triggered. If we go back here, and you see build image using port and then it's going to dump out the port because we had pushed to latest so it came into this then statement and we should see port and why port 8080 because over here in our custom uh, configuration of our auto builds we set port to 8080 okay so we kind of took a look at how you can tie into custom uh, build cycle in the in the build life cycle. So I want to show you. There's a whole bunch of things you can do. But if you go to Docker Advanced um, Auto Builds and doesn't matter, I didn't spell advanced right. It's going to be the first one. So if you come to this website in our documentation, our documentation is very good. Um, but take a look down through this this document, and you can see all the environment variables that are set up for you. How you need to structure how you need to structure sorry for fast scrolling how you need to structure your compose file and all all kinds of things so you could do it you could do a lot a lot of stuff with um with your custom hooks files uh even at the end you could push into another repository and um and i think it shows it down here yeah so even if you need to do um branching and special cloning you need to push to multiple repos you can do all kinds of stuff within these custom hook files. They're just shell scripts. Okay, so the next thing I want to show you is webhooks. So we're going to use a little test site that's called webhook.site. And I've set up a webhook here already. And you can find the, the post URL right here. So I'm going to copy that. And then we'll go back to uh, in the hub. And let's go into hooks. And then you can set up a webhook right here. Um, so let's go, let's do DockerCon webhooks. And then post the URL in there. Let's do create. And now we have our webhook here. Now, a webhook will be triggered when anytime you push uh, an image into your repository. So let's go back to our command line. And we can do um, Docker tag. Let's do pmkey hello world. And we will tag the latest to Pima Key Hello World. Let's do 2.2.2. So I click that. And now I'm going to do a Docker push. 
and P McKee 2.2.2 and we'll go ahead and push that okay that was pushed now if we come back here and look at our tags we could see that we have a 2.2.2 .2 image and then if we come over here to webhooks let's take a look at these we'll view the history here and we can see we we just did a push and let's go check out here and we can see we've gotten um, pushes uh, that come into the webhook we sent messages into the webhook and here you can see the raw data so this is a awesome way to connect into um, other servers or instances or clouds in your CI uh, and then CD pipeline so if you're looking to uh, distribute your images to another repository you can use webhooks or if you want to update uh, canary services those type of things you can send a webhook after an image has been pushed okay let's do a quick little review so we started out taking a look at continuous integration and what that was then we took a look at the way hub does continuous integration we looked at how you create a repo and then how you connect that repo into github and then we took a look at how you can set up auto builds and auto tests and we did that very simply in built in hub and then we took a look at how you can connect into that life cycle of the build and how you can do uh, custom builds custom pushes to different repos and those type of things and then we kind of finished it out with webhooks we took a look how you how you can set up a webhook on hub and how that webhook gets fired once an image is pushed into the repository that way you can connect in other ci cd systems and the cloud so thank you so much for joining me i really appreciate your time make sure you check out all the other talks and please stay safe out there